Now I have the pleasure to present Dr. Fatima Cardeso. She is representing the European School of Oncology Belgium, and she'll present management of locally advanced breast cancer in middle resource settings. I'll just say Dr. Fatima Cardoso from Belgium, and then I'll ask you to present yourself in half a minute or something. Thank you. Good morning, and thank you very much for the invitation to be here. I apologize, but I'm very sick, so if you cannot hear me, just uh, uh, tell me. I'll try to speak up uh, a little bit more. And I'm particularly, uh, it's, a, it's a real pleasure for me to be here because maybe most of you do not know, but I was born in Africa, so I have a special emotional link to uh, that continent. And it's a particular pleasure for me to be here. And thank you very much, Benjamin and, and uh, Dr. Kazap, for the invitation. So today, I, I am a medical oncologist. But I, I am currently moving from Belgium back to Portugal. But today, I'm representing the European School of Oncology. And uh, usually, it's Alberto Costa who's here. So I'm sorry, ladies, but this year, you have to <laughs> stay with me. <laughs> Uh, so I will try uh, as, as quickly as possible to give you um, an overview on how we can manage this uh, very important problem, as you could uh, realize from the previous talks, how important locally advanced breast cancer is in a middle and low resource setting. So I will try to go through what, what, what can we do for this uh, disease. So let's try to have um, an overview of the problem. So this, uh, the, the definition of locally advanced is an evolving concept, and it's very different, for example, uh, in, uh, in the US and Western Europe and the definition in, uh, elsewhere. And um, it's also very different, the burden of disease. As you can see, in the US and Western Europe, it's only about 2 to 5% of all breast cancer, but in other countries, it can go to 50 or 70%, as you uh, heard before. And it is one of the most important messages is, is that that stage of disease, unlike metastatic disease, this stage is still potentially curable. And so what we should do and all the focus of the treatment should have a curative intent. So these are um, the clinical definition. It's a large primary tumor that has skin involvement, either in the breast or the ch uh, chest wall, with involvement of uh, lymph nodes. Uh, supraclavicular or subclavicular and axillary. And in terms of TNM, this is where uh, the definition has been involved, evolving. And in some uh, settings, uh, it's, it suffice to have a tumor larger than three centimeters to consider it locally advanced, for instance, in the US and Western Europe. Well, in, others, in other uh, countries, you would consider locally advanced from 3A, 3B, uh, uh, and 3C. So basically, I think we can commonly say that from 2B on, you should consider locally advanced. And in terms of management and clinically, to clinically approach this disease, it is important to divide, let's say, in three classes or three groups. There is the oper operable um, uh, locally advanced breast cancer, inoperable one, and the inflammatory breast cancer, which is a very specific uh, subtype of uh, breast cancer. And in, in terms of locally advanced, I also would like to separate two uh, situations. There is what I call the slow-growing, neglected, locally advanced breast cancer, which is not necessarily a very aggressive disease. And there is the rapidly growing uh, locally advanced breast cancer, which is more, much more similar to inflammatory breast cancer. So um, for the inflammatory breast cancer, this is, of course, the most aggressive uh, subtype of uh, locally advanced breast cancer. It usually grows rapidly in less than three months. It has a, a, a risk of very uh, early and widespread metastatic uh, um, dissemination. It can give very quickly life-threatening visceral metastasis. And in fact, if we do not use effective uh, systemic therapy and fast enough, it can lead to a mortality rate of 95% uh, at less than two years. And the diagnosis of, of inflammatory breast cancer is mainly clinical. You don't even need to have invasion 
uh, of the dermis in the pathology uh, exam. It's mainly a, a clinical diagnosis with a clinical triad of erythema, edema, what is so-called peau d'orange, and the ridging. So what is important in terms of diagnosis for these two entities is that you should carefully examine both breasts and the regional lymph nodes because these uh, two uh, types of cancer, of breast cancer, are usually multifocal and, usual, and very frequently bilateral. And it is very common that you do not have a well-defined mass. This is one of the reasons why sometimes diagnosis is postponed because you don't feel a nodule but you have a diffuse induration, which is not always easy to detect. And it's not uh, only in the middle or low resource uh, countries that we see women that uh, arrive to our, our clinic having been treated with antibiotics for so-called mastitis that should be, that people in, um, or gynecologists or other primary care physicians uh, consider that it was infectious and treat them for over six months with antibiotics. That still happens in many places in Western Europe and even in the US, uh, uh, I am sure. So the difficulty in diagnosis is everywhere, and this should be uh, something that we should keep in mind. Um, for In terms of imaging, mammography, it's important, of course, but please keep in mind that it's not always seen in mammography, especially uh, in, because of this lack of defined mass. And so ultrasound, if possible, is a very important complement. And then the importance of, and I will speak about this very often in my talk, the importance of having a biopsy and very uh, simple pathology that it's not a high cost pathology, it's not, um, we don't necessarily need microarray and all the stuff that we heard about so many uh, times, but very simple pathology can help us define the best treatment for these uh, patients. And it is very important to have the histological type. As you will see, it has implications for treatments, the grade, and at least the estrogen receptor. If possible, and if in your country there is uh, the possibility of having access to trastuzumab, it is also, of course impo uh, also important to have HER2 um, um, examination. And then uh, at least a minimal metastatic workup since the risk of having